right, today we are at the, in Upland, California at the Rock House Brewing Company, LLC, with Mark and Lars, the proprietors of this fine <laughs> Viking <laughs> establishment. Everybody, welcome, welcome. So right. what made you want to so, brew? So, so we can start with, yes, I, I've known him since I was five years old. Okay. He actually worked, wow. uh, worked with my parents at our family coffee shop. You know, I was five years old. Uh, at that point, Mark had been brewing for about six years. He started brewing a year before I was born. Okay. Fast forward um, 16 years. Uh, you know, I turned 21 and got my first beer sure, fest. Sure, 21. And, um, <laughs> so through our drunken <laughs> conversing, I'm like, oh, Viking brewery, that'd be awesome. And sometime in the next year, I come to my good family friend Mark. <laughs> and at, at that time, I had a home brewing supply shop. Yeah. So Lars came in and he goes, I want to learn how to brew. And I'm like, cool. And he said, but I want to go all grain. I'm like, here's all my equipment. You know, I think you're crazy. Yeah. Here's a recipe. And God all speed and stuff. good luck, sir. And I, I don't know how many times I told him it was crazy. You know, and he went off on his own. He made beer. He came back. I tried it. I go, that's damn good. <laughs> so, so, you know, he kept doing it, kept doing it. He screwed up a couple times. But for the most part, he figured out what was going on. You oh, know? he's got it. you got to learn from you know? And um, tried some of those beers. And and. Uh, and, and I don't have any years after that, we kind of thought about starting brewing together and uh, working on recipes and things like that. And it was that like, much more delicious. Yeah, yeah. What was the first recipe do you remember working on together? Was um, it the Berserker or was it? Uh, well, I mean, technically, I mean, if you want to go back on now, the first one we brewed together or the first one well, that we kind of collabed on? What's the, what's the first one that kind of started, yeah, like a collaboration? Well, I mean, just, where we are just for funsies, uh, the Midnight Sun <laughs> Imperial Black Ale, uh, that was the fourth beer that I ever brewed. Yeah. And <laughs> wow. I came up with a random Imperial <laughs> IPA recipe, and I came to Mark's show too, and he's just like, why don't you make an Imperial Black IPA? <laughs> like, okay. So, so there's some uh, Carafa malt in there, Ooh, and yeah. that was the Midnight Sun, and that yeah. was. I said nine, eight, eight, nine years ago. And it's like still fourth beer, and it's still the same recipe. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you go. All right. Man. Awesome. So that was technically probably the first collab. <laughs> and then our first legit beer, once we were brewing together, was probably the Hammer. Yeah. I mean, that one was a, our first true, like, you know, we both put our hands together and just wanted to do a different IPA, something that was balanced, not so bitter and West Coast and light and just in your face. We yeah. want it to be balanced, more going on, still have a malt profile. So it's still hoppy very hoppy. Races. No, that's very yeah, yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. hoppy, just not very bitter. bitter. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And there is a difference, you know. Yeah. Hops huge don't mean difference. Yeah. 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 So you should tell them about your love story there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Berserker brand. So um, one of my first dates with my now wife, we got married three, three weeks ago. Oh, um, hell yeah. <laughs> was uh, going on a hike with her, and I secretly brought a couple home brews of the Berserker Brown in my backpack. And, you know, I find a little romantic bend in the, in the trail, and <laughs> take her off and pull out these bottles. You know, she's just a little apprehensive because she's like, what the hell are you trying to drug you yeah, yeah. <laughs> According to the <laughs> where they come from. <laughs> yeah, so she's a little nervous, and you know, tries it. And, Thought it was amazing. Think, thinks that I freaking just took a label off some fancy fancy beer, <laughs> just trying to impress her. Does she have proof that you didn't? <laughs> ah, that's a good point. Honestly, and, and <laughs> <laughs> she does not. But I was, <laughs> but I was actually in her defense a few days beforehand. I was the beer wasn't ready yet. Yeah. You know, it was bottle conditioning getting getting hard up, and I was seriously thinking like, if it's not ready, like I want, I got impressed with my beer, so I was I was thinking I. I, I got to find some beer that's close to <laughs> If it's not ready, but it was. It was. Uh, I mean, so you should get your open and just, you know, off the side, sip it a little bit, make yeah. sure it was good. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, there, totally, totally. So there must have been a little good. I just removed the label. There. Yeah, but she loved it. I, I wooed her with, with <laughs> the Berserker Brown. With the Berserker Brown. Oh, like I said, the rest is history. We opened up the brewery. She actually opened up the brewery with us oh. a couple years ago. Two years before we got married, so she's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Go you. Sounds like a keeper. <laughs> yep. She's a keeper. Yeah. Apart from the theming and the story and everything, uh, is there any qualities about the beer here that's that really are different or set apart from you know? There's a lot of beer in you know. You know, a lot of people have asked this question, and and honestly, I have to. You know, going to get probably cheery eyed and all right now. It's it's the love. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's love that we put into the beer. Um, well, there's a lot of experience behind it too. There is, yeah. But, you know, it's like we have passion for it. We haven't lost the passion. Um, you know, everything we do is hands-on. 
You know, there's nothing mechanical about the beers that we make. They're, it's everything is hands-on, from grinding the grain to you know the mash in, the mash out. Everything is physical, and I think it's the love. I mean, I seriously do. And it makes our it makes our beers. <laughs> it makes our beers. It makes them. It makes them better. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of TLC in every pour. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, and, and I mean, on top of that, you know, one of our big uh, mantras of any beer that we do, um, you know, we want to be really diverse. We want to have, you know, our big dark beers. We want to have our hoppy beers. We want to have our light beers. A lot of people, you know, get it, they get stuck in one style and just kind of stick there. But you know, we like to go all over the place. And uh, but in that, uh, we always like to keep our beers balanced. And that is one thing that I notice a lot of breweries don't necessarily do. Sure. Um, it's like even in our even in our IPAs, yeah, they're going to be hoppy, they're going to be more bitter than other things. We still got to find that balance, balance yeah. to make them enjoyable to the masses. We don't want there to be like, oh, that's Rock House. No, that's Rock House. Yeah. That's Rock House. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, like, oh, that's a freaking great brown. That's a great IPA. Yeah. That's a great double IPA. And that's I mean, look at our, I mean, our popular beers. Our most awarded beer is a saison, followed by our Berserker Brown. And our flagship is an IPA. Yeah. So they're all, you know, completely yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably our main compliment is that, you know, people will try a flame and they're like, you know, I, I couldn't tell that any one of these four is from the same group. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's time to try some beer. Yeah. I think we should drink some beer. I think we should drink some beer. I, I like beer? this plan. I like Especially beer. because my glass is almost in. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's so a bad problem to right. have. <laughs> so we got the, uh, Versus one of our milk. light examples, um, Battles <laughs> and Blood Orange Wit. <laughs> um, and cool enough, the blood orange tree that uh, my dad planted at the house that he now lives in when I was about three uh, is the tree that we use to infuse I our blood orange peel into yes. this beer. That is right amazing. We get, about, <laughs> okay. we get about two batches of it yeah. a year. Do we have like a traditional way of... of, of we, we can. We can what are we going to do? Skull! Skull! Skull. Skull. Yeah. Or Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher. Yeah. Crusher. Crusher. So if you didn't know, so skull, scowl, Ooh. however you want to say it, skull, <laughs> is uh, um, Old Norse for skull, and it's because Vikings back in the day when uh, they would have a successful battle, they would uh, party down and drink ale and mead out of their the skulls what? of their enemies. <laughs> that's, uh, that's awesome. Skull. This is this is fantastic. Oh my god. It's this, so this is the first batch that we actually decided to take some of the juice. Of the oranges and put it into the batch, and I think it really. No, it there's really, definitely really there's definitely yeah, orange in that. I love it. I love yeah, orange. It's, yeah. uh, I think this is my favorite batch that we've ever. Yeah, made. it's very yeah. citrusy yeah, we, notes. Yeah. We say that every time, but this one <laughs> we do. All. I would rip probably, off. probably this actually. This will be the best batch ever. <laughs> I would rip off a head and drink this out of a skull yeah, for you guys. Yeah. Uh, for this, this is delicious. I love it. Is I love it. So because you only get, you don't have the arm strength to perform that. <laughs> I need all I need is like an Iron Man suit. I can do it because you only get a couple of matches out of it a year, and it's obviously linked to when you know oranges are in season. Uh, yeah, so so this we is, usually get January and maybe a batch in June. Yeah, this, it's like, amazing. Uh, cool. It's very good. Oh, I'm an orange fanatic. Oh, that's another so a couple weeks probably. Because I'm not a huge fan of blood oranges it's myself. Tree my is, own person, but this is it, it's so good. Like you get nice kind yeah. of. I think flavor. the tree is maybe dying 40 it. years old. Well, well no, no, my dad planted it oh, okay. from, from, okay. a, a so. bit, from a baby tree. So you look so. bitching for 43 years old, bro. It's 27 years old. Uh, the last three, so. And it does have a really nice crop of oranges. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. So All right. Makes a really good beer. I like it a lot. But Tim's right. You know, it's not as, you know, a lot of times you see blood orange weight, you know, you see a lot, but it's like... Yeah, super, subtle. super yeah. citrusy, and this really is not. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them, so, them are just like drinking orange juice, but mm -hmm. <laughs> then you got to run to the bathroom. For it's, <laughs> it's of course rock house style. <laughs> but you know what? If you're ever sick, you need that vitamin C real quick. Exactly. I know where I'm going. Beer What's number next? two. So beer number two is our uh, our award winning She Wolf saison. All right, uh, right. He Wolf. Let's do it. He Wolf. Gold. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hashtag gold. <laughs> gold. Mm -hmm. Just delivered to the fair today. Awesome. So the Saison is a, a Belgian style Saison. So we use a Belgian style yeast in it. We use uh, about three different types of lemon peel in it. <laughs> but uh, from the very first recipe that uh, the girls came up with and brewed and uh, 
we just got kind of to sit back and watch them do it and everything. And um, their first batch got an honorable me mention at the LA County Fair and uh, uh, the LA International, International beer competition. Yes, beer oh, competition. Oh, oh, oh. oh wow! So fancy. Uh, it's actually, the saison is a pretty big category. So I was gonna yeah. say this is the most distinguished, so, like yeah. different <laughs> saison I've ever had. Which is and it should awesome. be a, it should be a little funky and it is and no we try, and, yeah we good. try everything we can do to get it a bit on the funky side do, you know it's a farmhouse style yeah. ale so. oh so open fermentation then. no no well open in the sense that what happens a little happens. bit of beard <laughs> we don't do a beard beer yet yeah this yeah, is a yeah. really clean saison yeah. like I, I love it all right all right what do we have next so this is our uh, our flagship beer our hammer of Thor IPA yes um, so. Cheers. Skull. 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 It's going to be mighty skull. 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 So this is the balanced and yet hot no, no. beer. Look at me. No, no. <laughs> yeah, so hoppy, but at the same time malty. I mean, it's not. Oh, whoa, not, whoa. Yeah, not too bitter in your face. Just kind of. Sorry. I didn't get the oh, hop. I didn't so get the good. hops like three seconds later. Like yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. oh, oh, oh. And then <laughs> you get that. I mean, it's, you know, citrusy, woodsy, you know, you got a little. Smidge of tropical fruit in there. So I'll get the, like the initial taste, which is great, like the malt, I guess. And then Very complex hops for a split second, and then like right after that, it's like yeah, it's just yeah. No, no, like, that's still hops on the back end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I don't. No, like all that interesting flavors, yeah. all the interesting flavors you're getting are from the hops. It's like I it, mean, there's a little bit of the malt yeah. at the beginning, a little yeah. bit of that's, the malt that's at on, the end. Yeah. But, I mean, um, but yeah, but most of the uh, like I said, fruity, citrusy, woodsy yeah. characteristics, all that. Yeah. Bitterness aside. Yeah. Fun. What are we What are we closing uh, it out? So this is the uh, the Midnight Sun Imperial Black. This Ooh. is the like number four name. home brew, like I said. Our, yeah. I, I, that person so I brewed uh, was twenty. Oh, so, uh, nice. <laughs> we are not drinking a stout, correct? Even though correct. it looks like a stout. Imperial Black. So it's uh it is not heavy whatsoever. Oh wow! Yeah. Not thick. Not. No. Full bodied like a stout or porter or anything. So like basically, that. it's not like it's eating a, a loaf of bread. Not at all. <laughs> but, um, oh, that it's, color's it's, fantastic. You cannot uh, see yeah, through that. That is beautiful. Yeah, it's black. High, Sorry. High SRMs. 9%, uh, but it's very easy to drink. Yes. Yeah. Um, at its core, it's an IPA, but um, huh. we took back the hops enough so that the uh, the cool maltiness would come out. It's a little sure. more unique yeah. compared to other yeah. stouts and whatnot. Um, so they would come through and just drop the IPA and started calling it an Imperial Black, which is kind of just our own. It cool freaks style. people out because yeah. there's no no category for Imperial <laughs> Black. It's like, what is it? It defies <laughs> categorization. So basically, it just gets you fucked up really quick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Of your beers are really easy drinking, especially like the high alcohol content ones. Mm -hmm. Like a few months ago, you introduced us to a quad IPA, which I'd never had before in my life. 13% alcohol. What, what oh, was the number? Ah. It was supposed to be like 150 IBU or something. Ish. Like it was something like. <laughs> Once you get up that high, well, something, yeah, it was something bad. ridiculous. Who's counting? <laughs> and it was like you barely, oh, not you barely, you. It still no, you, tasted really balanced. <laughs> it wasn't incredibly bitter. You would never have taken. You know, Never would have you had that no idea. Yeah, it was, you had like no idea. It, <laughs> it did not taste as boozy as it was, and it went down so this is, fast. This is why we can only drink it the first week that we brewed it. <laughs> after that, we, it was like, yeah, so, <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> it's like I need to take a nap. So, okay, so, we still need to brew the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we had about four ounces of this new. <laughs> so essentially, if a Viking were to like, you know, like. There's a Viking stuck in ice, and it just defrosts, and it walks into here like, listen, I need something that will absolutely like remind me of like the olden days. You'll be like, this is it. Is that the one you would give? You would give him? That I'd say school crush. With, uh, <laughs> yeah, with the chaser of the school crush. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, go all the way. Go big or go home. He's been um, we like to end all of our episodes with a geeky <laughs> question, um, and so today, because we're in a Viking themed place, the question's gonna be, if you had to repel a Viking raiding party coming at you what's your weapon of choice a keg on my back yeah okay to all right oh offer peace yeah and if I that like doesn't that work curry favor with them <laughs> and if that doesn't work <laughs> thor's hammer over here yeah, <laughs> yeah. And smart some, it depends on the time frost giants period. maybe <laughs> <laughs> either a gnarly battle axe in this hand or actually later in the viking period there were actually axe guns Later on in Scandinavian <laughs> culture, this was past. This was past technically the Viking Age, but yeah. So, 
Axe gun. Okay. Yeah. I like Axe gun. Axe yeah. gun. Yeah. Axe gun, hammer kick. Yeah. Okay. That works. Axe gun, hammer kick. <laughs> I feel like we should save like... marks for the last and just cut it when he well, says Well, I changed it. my answer. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> my original a- answer was my penis. <laughs> <laughs> The hammer is my just, penis. Just, just swing it like a club. With the just bapping people over the head. You know, Can't wait till Sue sees this. Will you call? Like, that's the first one. Will you call the she wolf? <laughs> but now I'm just gonna put Lars out in front of me. Yeah. yeah. Like, Lars, just shake me. Just shake I'm gonna sit back the here and drink a beer. Lars, you go out there with your call tag yourself the and last resort and everything. <laughs> if it all goes to shit, you know you got his swinging cock. <laughs> Honestly, they'll probably see it and be like, they'll probably see him and be like, those are some balls right there. I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> Holy crap, I have nothing to follow that up with. <laughs> the, be- the best I got, AK-47. Oh, uh, well, that's kind of the fun of that. I mean, yeah, really I mean you're, you're, you're fighting a Viking raiding party. That's They're so going to school. murder you. Yeah, but come on, you got axe gun and keg hammer. I, I was thinking, uh, what, what is it like? The, the Icelandic girl, uh, the singer, um, Bjork. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking throw her out there. They'll be so confused. They'll be like, and they'll be like, um, this is shit. <laughs> what are we fighting? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in on this discussion. Come back and check out Rock House Brewing Company, LLC, in Upland, California. Try some fantastic Viking-themed beer. It's a beautiful tasting room. It's beautiful beer full of hops and malts and love. And beautiful and people. And, and the best five, people. The absolute best. Four, three, two, one for a chug off. <laughs> Are we doing it? Yes! Hell yeah! Let's fucking do it! All right. All right. <laughs> No.